All right, three after, why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, let's see, in terms of AIs, the only thing that I want to point out, actually, never mind, I'll point that out later. Uh, if you have an AI, please get to it when you get a chance. There's, the list is shrinking though, so that's all goodness. Um, about the face-to-face -face in Shanghai, um, we do have a list of proposed topics in a Google Doc. So when you get a chance, if even if you're not going, but you think there would be a, a, a topic that isn't listed there that you think might be a good topic for us to talk about, please feel free to add it. I am planning on setting up a call next week for the people who will be there to discuss options for what we're going to discuss and who wants to talk to which topic. Um, if you do want to participate in that, please just add your name to the mailing list or to the Google Doc. And uh, include your email in case I don't have it. Uh, there's one person in there who I I cannot remember their email address, unfortunately. Um, now, we, I am planning on doing a, a phone call this Friday at 3 p.m. based upon the Google poll that I sent out for brainstorming around the next possible interop type event. Uh, I do have a Google Doc here uh, with a list of ideas. Nothing is set in stone at all right now, which is sort of my rambling so far. So please, if you have additional ideas or suggestions, please make them in there. Even if you can't uh, join that call or don't think you're going to be able to participate in the event itself. If you think you have a good idea for us to look at, please add to the doc. Um, but according, according to the, as I mentioned, according to the Doodle poll, it looks like 3 p.m. this Friday, Eastern time, um, is when we'll have the phone call. So I'll send out an invite to the whole mailing list. Um, so anybody's free to join, even if they didn't put their name on the doc. Anything about those two events that people want to bring up? Any questions or comments? All right, not hearing any. Stickers. Um, the new logos that um, Austin put together for us are finally available in the CNCF shop. Um, and uh, so they are finally in stock and I was given a coupon code. To, so I was able to order 200 of them this morning. Hopefully they will arrive relatively soon and I'll be able to bring uh, those to the uh, KubeCon event in Shanghai as well as Seattle and hand those out to not just other people, but to you guys as well. So you guys should be able to share that with your family and friends because that's always exciting. So just wanted to share the latest status on that. Um, I suppose if you guys have a conference that you'd like to give those out to before those events, uh, drop me a note and I'll do my best to maybe ship some off to you. Um, it's up to you or you can wait to the conference. And I'll, I will bring the, the, the full stack available uh, to those conferences. All right, any questions on that? All right, community time. Is there anybody on the call who's not a regular uh, person on this phone call from the community who'd like to bring up a topic in general? All right, now hearing anybody, let's keep moving forward then. I don't see Austin on the call, so I'll try to update what, as far as I know, what happened with the SDK group. Um, I believe we had a phone call last week. I, um, and really, for the most part, we talked about the GitHub repos or maybe that was actually the week before. Anyway, I think from our last uh, Thursday phone call, we agreed to go ahead and create the repos, uh, one per language. So I created a Python, C Sharp, Java, and JavaScript repo. Uh, VMware wants us to just migrate their existing Golang repo over, so they're working on whatever, I think, uh, internal approval process they have to make that happen. So hopefully that'll happen fairly soon. <clears throat> but then we should have, what is that, uh, five different repos all set up. Um, I need to be given the names, or I'm sorry, the GitHub IDs of people who would like to be made admins on those. Because um, as of right now, I don't think I've made anybody an admin. And I'm definitely not doing all the work on all five repos. So I need people to, to send me a note or ping me on Slack with the GitHub IDs of who you want to have admin access on there. At some point, we should probably talk about the governance of those repos. Um, but for right now, um, we'll leave it a little bit loose just to get the things uh, bootstrapped a little. But anyway, we should probably talk about it at some point. Uh, any questions about SDK work or anybody who was on the SDK call? Can they think of something that I forgot to mention? All right, not hearing anything, moving forward. Kathy, is there anything you'd like to mention relative to the workflow, I'm sorry, workflow subgroup? Um, not really, yeah. Okay. All right, in that case, are there any questions for Kathy? All right, not hearing any, moving forward then. All right, PR reviews. We have a couple on here, which should hopefully be fairly straightforward. Let's see what we got here. First one. All right, 
So this one, I wanted to just, this is just a minor typo. Um, everything else in this list was singular, so I decided to make admin singular as well. The bulk of the PR is I wanted to update our owner's file to be a little more consistent with owner's file that I've seen in other projects. Um, in particular, this just basically listed the admins, and I, which I still keep, so I still have the admin section. But I wanted to do was add an approvers section. Now, even though we don't have a formal list of approvers per the normal GitHub process, uh, what I did do is add a comment here pointing to our spreadsheet, telling people to look at the voting rights column in there. And that will give them the current list of, in essence, approvers, meaning people who have voting rights, since that's the closest thing we have to that. I don't think this is a change in our process. I just wanted to document what we're actually doing. Yeah, looks good to me. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments on this? I have a question. When we mm -hmm. talked about this before, I thought we were going to cover how we like what we do if one of our current admins leaves yes and i actually i did that this morning in the sense that i think on a previous phone call we talked about opening up an issue to make sure that we add additional documentation to cover that i opened the issue this morning i have not had a chance to actually execute on the issue yet but that is on my to-do list so okay. yes yep all right any other questions or comments all right any objection to adopting this pull request All right, not hearing any, thank you guys. All right, next one. This one's also mine. A couple of things here. One is um, we're not really a new effort anymore. So I just wanted to, to clean that up while I was in here making the other real changes, which is we are, um, I wanted to make it clear that, um, um, I'm sorry, I got distracted there. I want to make it clear when we actually became a sandbox project, um, mainly because, and this is a strictly selfish reason, every now and then somebody pings me about our status, what we're doing, or when we became a, a real project, and I, for life, may have the hardest time remembering it, and I figure other people may have made me the information about when we became a sandbox project, so I wanted to include a link to the Google Doc for the uh, TOC meeting in which they actually voted to make us a real sandbox project. And it was on May 15th. So I just want to put that information in there. That's really the main purpose behind this PR so that other people can reference it if they need it. Any questions on that or comments? Any objection to approving? The only, uh, oh, yeah. Hey Doug, this is Ken. The only um, the comment in it, it's kind of a, a dumb comment, so I apologize, but I think we're going to try to change sandbox to cloud native sandbox. We're kind of in discussions on that right now, but since you're making changes, if you want to just, instead of saying sandbox, say cloud native sandbox in front of that, and that should cover, okay. cover you for, for going forward with the CNCF sandbox naming. So you want cloud native sandbox. Okay. Yep. I can do that. Is there any objection to making that change along with everything else in the PR? So it would appear right here. Doug, you need to fix the, the uh, columns. Oh, do you mean the 80 column thing? Not on, the, not on the URL, the, uh, you've removed a bunch of text on the line 18, and now line 18 is very short. I don't mind short, I mind long. But if it makes you happy, I will try to make it look a little more consistent just for you, Scott. <laughs> it has to be aligned. <laughs> anyway, I'll work on that, Scott. Any other comments or questions on this? Any objections to approving? All right. Oops, not Scoot, sorry, it's got that Scott. Uh, okay, approved, thank you guys very much. Uh, Kathy, this PR is yours, I believe. Come on, here we go. All right, you wanna to talk to this one, Kathy? Yeah, this is just a, a, a minor twist per last meetings um, action item, just to uh, clarify. Um, uh, that you know, if the primary representative cannot attend the meeting, and he he or she can have a delegate, um, and that attendance will be counted. Yeah. All right. Any questions or comments on this one? English is kind of hard in this. The they in line seventy one doesn't. It's not clear if it's the delegate or the pair. Um, should we change it to, uh, um, I don't want to say company or individual, it's me kind of verbose. Um, I think here the they is same as the lens 70, you know, they obtain right. 
that's not changed. Yeah, I think, I think Scott's um, worried about it because you introduced a sentence in between the two. When they're right next to each other, the they was a little more clear. Am I right, Scott? Right, originally they was the, a, a single person. Oh, actually it was company, but you, okay, that, so definitely need to clear that up then. Um, also columns. Yeah, thank you, Scott. <laughs> Gonna kill me. Any suggested alternate word there then, instead of they? Uh, participants or entity. Yeah, I was going to suggest entity. Okay. That works. Okay. Kathy, are you okay with that? Yeah. So I just changed that to the entity. Okay. Yeah. If you can, if you if you can do that, that'd be great. Um, any other suggestions or comments on this? I'm sorry, someone was speaking. Yeah, it was Jesse. Um, so not to nitpick, but I think the his her could be there. <laughs> Kathy, you want to get that one too? It's a little cleaner too. It is her there. Oops. Kathy, you okay with that one too? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right. Any objections to adopting this PR with those minor wording tweaks? All right, not hearing any. Let me make a note of that. And column spacing. Yes, yeah, Scott, I gotcha. So, Kathy, if you can just adjust the columns to make Scott happy, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> okay, um, here we go. One that's a little bit meatier. So, if you guys remember correctly, we wanted to define a bar for adding new. Uh, extension attributes to the extension document. I believe last time we talked about this, um, it may have been Thomas who suggested that uh, we actually have, in essence, sort of sponsors, um, meaning at least two voting members of the group say that they are willing to say, yes, we should uh, adopt this as a well-known extension. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to uh, implement it themselves. It just means that they think it's worthy enough to be included. And I believe that's in here. Um, yeah, it needs to have at least two voting members. And the, if, the, if, if, um, if the author of the pull request is a voting member, they are allowed to be one of the two as well. That way we don't have to worry about people playing funny games, giving it, about like other people submitting PRs you know, on behalf of other people just so they can vote. Anyway, I think it's been out there for at least five days or something like that. Any questions on this or comments? Going once. Any objection then to adopting it? All right, wow, that was easy. Thank you guys. All right, Christoph. And now I know Christoph, there may be some open comments on this one, so we may not be able to approve it today. But I did want to get people's general sense about the direction because I think it was a very interesting approach and I just wanted to bring it up for the group. You want to talk to this one? Yeah, uh, I apologize in advance. My two-year-old is here, so he may talk uh, in between. <laughs> so we'll try anyway. Uh, if it's too annoying, uh, just stop me. Um, so this uh, came from well, a couple of uh, problems. Um, specifically for HTTP, a problem is that uh, names or headers are not case sensitive. So we have a problem if you want to convert a, a case sensitive attribute name to, a, uh, to an HTTP header. Um, so we already had a, um, uh, what we call it, an attribute naming convention. So I basically in this PR, I sharpened it. So maybe you can scroll down. Uh, to the other file. Oh, to the other file. Yeah. Okay. So, um, oh. yeah. Yep. So this already said um, we should use camel casing, uh, for example. So I made this a bit, what do you say, more strict um, in saying that you should only use alphanumeric characters and it must start with a letter. So we had before as a goal that the attribute names should be. 
Okay, uh, should be available uh, for or should aid the integration of common programming languages. And I think like if you limit it to alphanumeric characters, we actually get closer to this goal. So it's really, well, it, it takes away a lot of freedom, like, okay, but then we are kind of sure that we can use this name in all programming languages. And we also um, open up the possibility to convert between Kevl case and snake case or for HTTP converted to uh, non-case sensitive uh, ways. So that, that one I did then in the upper file. So I made new rules basically for HTTP uh, headers where there is kind of an existing uh, convention that you separate words with a dash. So I made that the rule for the HTTP binding. Okay, that's it from my side. Do you want to mention the, the one that's uh, a little bit weird? Oh yeah, that, that one. So uh, following, this, following, this rule, following this rule strictly means that, for example, ID would be separated by two dashes, which is also not how you would do it in the uh, HTTP convention. So we could think about making exceptions, for example, ID and URL and so on. Uh, but I think we can discuss this. Yeah. All right, any questions on this one? I thought it was kind of an interesting approach. So I wanted to get it out there because I know this is a big topic for people. Um, I like it. I think the only concern that I would have about the special casing is we would have to make that list huge up front because adding to it later would break version changes later. So the earlier SDKs that don't know about the special named ones wouldn't know how to deal with uh, those later. Um, so if we're going to go with that approach, we should find every uh, special case that we could possibly want up front uh, to avoid breaking the, the SDKs later. Just out of curiosity on that, would it be sufficient for us to say that acronyms or abbreviations are special and, and leave it at that, or do you think we'd actually need to list them out? Um, I, I would imagine that we would probably need to list them out. Um, cause again, if, if they're all lower cased, um, by, you know, whatever means it, it'd be hard to actually tell if those letters were meant to be an acronym or if they're just actually a word. Oh, uh, you're right. I forgot about going the other direction. Yeah. All right. Any comments from other people? Yeah, I have, uh, one, um, the, so I'm running into the same problem yet again now with, uh, um, in another context with uh, um, trying to get MQP and uh, uh, HTTP aligned. We have the same problem. Um, and um, I think ultimately from a, so th th this mapping from with the injecting the dashes and pluses, I think that's gonna get um, ugly very fast. Um, in practical use because um, it's not entirely clear what that means and then you may may um, have mix, mixed use cases where so uh, I don't want to make it too complicated um, I would probably I would probably rather go and make our um, constrain our names more that we use in the specification and say you can only use your lowercase Because, because right now we use camel casing because it's pretty and that's the only reason. But we can constrain ourselves and, and making things case insensitive is a giant deep pit. So if we can, because case folding and then what is a character and are we constraining ourselves to ASCII and if we're not, then you're in UTF-8 territory, then you're in, in case folding um, scenario. So I think if we're more constrained if we're more restrictive about what we allow and say, you can only use lowercase um, and you can only use uh, um, effectively ASCII uh, uh, characters, um, then uh, we would make that easy for everybody. So just to be clear, that would mean uh, in particular, say the, the JSON format, all the, um, JSON properties would be lowercase. Yeah, everything would be lowercase. Right. Every, everything everywhere, but with that, we don't have any problems with 
case sensitivity. Right. Um, and um, we would simply, I mean, you would lose the, the prettiness of having a word separator, but I'm not sure how terrible that is. Right. Any comments? Uh, this is Tim. I, that, I think that's probably a good idea. Anytime case folding can possibly be avoided, it should be. Uh, it tends to be a performance bottleneck in some languages because they try and be Unicode complete and locale sensitive and so on. Um, we did that in, in AWS CloudWatch events. Everything's lowercase and, and it, it's, we've not regretted it. Uh, Doug, I think you might not be on mute. Was that just because you're not on mute or because you wanted to say something? Okay, maybe it's not going to say anything. Anybody else have a comment? Yeah, um, I wanted to clarify that this is alphanumeric characters only. So I think case folding, uh, if we really like only the, those base S key letters, it is not as bad if you, as if you have to fold full UTF-8 or UTF-16. Actually, it, sometimes it is. In a Turkish locale, the uppercase of lowercase i isn't uppercase i, it's something different. Um, and like languages will try and look at your locale setting and, and do the right thing. Um, so just don't do it if you can possibly not do it. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I, I hear two different alternatives being proposed. One is basically this PR and another one is just lowercase everything. Anybody else have any feedback on which direction they prefer or an alternative? I'd much rather have it be case insensitive. Is that advocating for the for case, case everything? Insensitive, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Vlad. Anybody else? I'm going to pick on somebody here just because I can. Austin, I'm going to pick on you as sort of the leader of the SDK subgroup. Do you have an opinion on this? <laughs> Hey, Doug. Hi, everyone. You caught me writing emails. I, I'm totally tuned out. I have an opinion. <laughs> I just I don't know what that is because I, I wasn't paying attention to this. Okay, fair enough. At least you're honest you about me. it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let me pick on somebody else then just for fun. Uh, because I know background on, in some of these protocols like this. Um, Matt Rakowski, uh, in your experience with some of your other inventing type of protocols and stuff, do you have an opinion on this one? I mean, it's better to be prescriptive on the, on the specification side and impose things in the authors of these events because if people bought into the spec and they're, gonna, they, they're intentionally going to author the spec, um, why suffer any issues in terms of case folding or having to add things to your pipeline to, to deal with you know, you know, tr transferring case, Unicode, all the things? Why inject other tools in the pipeline and things you don't need to? If people bought in the spec, they're going to code do it with the more prescriptive things to make processing more efficient. Okay, thank you, sir. Anybody else want to comment? So, hey, this is Jem. Um, th this would indicate a spec version change, yeah? Well, we're not at 1.0 yet, so we can make this change freely. Okay. So you won't bust anybody that's already um, programming to 0.1. You, my understanding okay. is, and again, new in, yeah? You're on 0 0.1 at the moment, yeah? Yeah, well, I wouldn't say we won't break somebody because we would, um, but it's okay that we break them because we haven't reached a major version of it yet. And until you okay. reach a major version of it, you can break them all you want. Okay, <laughs> no, that's fine. I just wanted to understand your policy. That's cool. Yep. All right. I was just looking at the HTTP headers specification. It looks like there's an RFC protocol in there to specify case insensitivity, so that might point to prior art. Yes, I think somewhere in our spec, we do talk about uh, HTTP headers being case insensitive as well. Actually, it says it right here, line 167, so yeah. All right, Klaus, would you like to say something? You said something in the chat. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wonder, um, in the case that you uh, have case insensitive names, you still would have some kind of uh, word separator, like the minus. So also in that case, you would somehow need to uh, mark up the map entries. So Clement, do you want to take that one? Um, was there a question for me? Yeah, he's basically saying, what if there are dashes in the 
in the property name, I believe, right, right, Heinz? Yeah. Um, I actually changed this in line 181. Oh. So I changed the uh, uh, dash to a plus sign to uh, make it for the map entries clear. Yeah, no yeah I, I, I'm a little, so the, so here's the thing that, I, that I'm struggling with, with that uh, annotation. Uh, the, um, so the CE is, the CE prefix was meant to be basically just a namespacing where you, everything that is prefix, prefixed with CE, you can go and take the string that follows CE and basically stash that back into a dictionary and then, and then clients will go and consume the attributes from that dictionary and the CE will be stripped. So that's just a purely, just a wire construct. The injection now of this, this dash or plus as an indicator um, now it turns that into a far more elaborate string operation because first you need to go and break the string apart and then on the other side you need to go and reassemble it again um, and that is assuming I guess that a there's a case where we actually have properties which differ only by uh, by name uh, by case um, and then you can also need to go and, and find out the casing without any help, just from that uh, arriving uh, um, HTTP header. So again, I'm leaning towards, towards that, that sounds all very complicated and basically speaks for us, our um, uh, uh, camel casing assumption from the base spec to be probably not correct um, because it's causing complication here. Okay. Uh, Matt, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, <laughs> did you got me my brain cells firing? Well, I thought I'd acknowledge that I think that this discussion is indicative of the mature dispatch and the, the, the um, current state of where people are at with it in terms of implementation, which means that people are looking at what tooling they need to use, what how to uh, eke out every last bit of performance, how to avoid confusion implementations. Um, and and if you, the next logical step then is to ask yourself, since this discussion is about, you know, how do you do word separation? The question is, why do we need word separation? Why, you know, if you look at all the, the examples here uh, above, why, is, why do we have to have an event in every name? It seems redundant by context, unless you have multiple times or multiple IDs, you need, need a differentiator, you know, a word differentiator or some other indicator. But unless it's, it's need, needed, why wouldn't you compact the, the event format and, and the keys as much as possible? So I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so I have my hand raised. I just wanted to point out one thing. I, I, I put this as a comment in one of the other issues out there. If you scroll up in the chat, you can see where I put in CE-MyProperty. I just want to feel to remember that HTTP headers can have, in essence, multiple values in there. So you can put a semicolon and then put, you know, name equals the real proper name in the proper casing with dashes or whatever you want. And that could be completely independent from however it's specified on the left-hand side of the colon as HTTP header. So we do have options like that as well. I'm not necessarily advocating that. I just want to make sure people remember that we have that kind of option. So going forward, though, I hear at least two options here. Um, I suspect people are going to want to think about both of them going forward. What I would like to suggest in terms of a next step here is maybe Clemens, could you open up a pull request uh, with your approach of just lowercasing everything so people could actually look at your pull request side by side with um, Christoph's and they can take a look at that and maybe on next week's call we could figure out which direction the group prefers. Does that sound okay? Yes, I'll do that. Okay. What other people think in terms of next step? Is that an appropriate next step or is there some other approach you guys would like to take to this? Okay, obviously if, if someone has a brilliant idea for an, a third alternative, don't hesitate to open up another pull request. Because I, I, I think having them in their complete form as, as full-blown spec edits makes it really easy for people to compare and contrast them going forward. Um, so don't, don't hesitate to create another one if you need to. Um, if right. I can raise 
that's one point. Um, mm -hmm. This also, like I said, it limits it to alphanumeric characters, and it means you cannot use UTF-8 or, like, like uh, Tim said, like Turkish names wouldn't be possible. So I would just like to go out, is that cool with everybody, or do you think this is a no-go? Because that would also change a bit the direction of things. No, I think I think we should we should really go and constrain constrain the character set to be um, uh, stay within ASCII uh, because you know everything. Else, so you have the choices of either allowing everything that's in UTF eight or constraining it to ASCII. That seems to be the the two fair choices, and um, I think that's something that we can reasonably do and and should do. All right, any other comments on that? You know, in 2018, handling, handling UTF-8 isn't rocket science. I mean, not, neither approach is completely insane. <laughs> All right, anything else? All right, any other comments or questions on this topic in general before we move on to the next agenda item? UTF-8 would be nice. I don't know the hassle it implies with the SDK and the transport specs, but it would be nice, especially as not having to encode the payload in any way if it contains any, let's say, exotic UTA, UTF characters. Okay. Any other last comments, questions? All right, so I think we have a direction to go. All right, now, since we've approved the PR about the bar for <clears throat> uh, extension attributes, we have this one here called sequence. Uh, let me hide the comments here for a sec. This one's actually been out there for quite a while. I don't think it's actually changed much recently. Um, let me pick on somebody so I'm not doing all the talking here. Christoph, would you like to talk to this one? Or did you have the, um, are you unable to? Uh, I can try. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this didn't start out uh, from me, but I think like from, uh, we as commerce tools, the company I work for, uh, this is like one thing we generally have that people are really, so we are working in the commerce space and it's for a lot of things important to understand the order of events and that you make sure that you process them in the right order. Um, yeah, so what I did is well, Ben started it, I think, and then I added some stuff to it. Um, what is what is what this basically does is um, two things. It generally says there is an attribute called sequence and there is some value in it and we don't really know what it is, but uh, if you know how it, to interpret it, then uh, you can find out which event comes from another. <laughs> and um, the second thing it does is it defines a sequence type. And if that is known to you, then you know how to interpret what you find in sequence. And this, uh, we have one sequence type defined called integer and it's basically an increasing integer. So pretty straightforward. It starts with one, then it goes to two, three, fours, and so on. Um, and then it wraps around at some point. Yep, All right. that's it. All right. Thank you, thank you. Are there any questions on this? Now, now keep in mind, this is just an extension, so the bar is lower. It doesn't really have to be perfect. It can change over time. Uh, the question here for the group is whether this uh, seems appropriate, you know, thing for us to add as an extension. Is it in scope for our spec? Um, does it seem like it's, it's at least well thought out? Not necessarily saying you agree with it or that you're gonna implement it, but does it seem like it's a valid thing that people may want to do as an extension? Um, I think it is, and, and part of that is because I believe somewhere in, in the spec we specifically call out being able to process stuff kind of in an order. Um, and that's not built into the, the basic spec. Um, so I think this is a, uh, at the very least, um, applicable for an extension, if not um, uh, a full-on property, because I, I can't remember exactly where it is, but there, it's called out as a, like a use case somewhere in the spec, um, being able to process stuff in order. Um, okay, thank you. Any other comments? I see some people in the chat saying that they think it's a valid thing. 
let me so let me turn the question slightly around. Is there anybody who would object to adding this as an extension? I, I guess I, I think I was comment. I was considering commenting on this one. I, I like the concept. Um, I think we could do with a second example. And I, I guess I was more hung up on the, um, the fact that it was for an integer sort of a gapless sequence. So I, I was sort of thinking there was an argument for, you know, saying it's of type gapless sequence rather than integer or um, just a gapped sequence. And, and I'm more sort of coming at that from the fact that as soon as you say this is a, a gapless sequence, it means your publishers become stateful. Yeah, so um, that, could, that could result in problems in some situations. Um, but that was more of a, I, I think, a semantic argument than anything else. Okay. It sounds like also the, the kind of thing that might be worthy of a follow on PR mainly because I think it may require a little bit of back and forth to get the wording and the, and the, and the uh, syntax of it quite, you know, a little bit more fleshed out. Right. And so I think maybe a follow on PR might be more appropriate. And keep in mind, these are just extensions. They can change anytime. They're not going to be a version with the rest of the spec. So these things are free to be changed on a daily basis if they need to be. So. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, there, sorry. there was a question about um, should it go into the main body, and I think that the sequencing is, is specific to uh, the context. Um, we already have time for ordering across boundaries, so I think it, it, it looks good in the extension. I'd vote for it to be there in favor of adopting it. Okay. Uh, Matt, um, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Um, all right, so back to the question. Is there any objection then to adding this? I'm not necessarily Okay, let me, I, I'm sorry, let me rephrase this. Um, I'm gonna, it's actually, there's a two-part question here. Um, is there any objection to this being a, uh, an extension property? Uh, this is Heinz. I, I'm not sure if it's a strong objection, but I think we're adding redundant data where generally the transport protocols already have sequence numbers and there's a large complexity where this all only works if there's one producer of the event. Because now if I have, let's say five producers to the event going to the same namespace, which at a transport could be a, a topic or a queue, uh, the ordering is only for that stream. So you would not have order across all of those. And those are usually solved at a transport level as opposed to in the, um, message itself at least as far as something that would relate to an event okay um matt i think you have your hand up are you responding to that comment yeah i, I this is the same point i make earlier and i hesitated because i didn't want to put you off agenda but you know we're going to see a lot of these things coming up where people have want to add a value and it always comes in a pair you have to give it a type so you always have a type value so you know, one thing that we, we did in past approaches is we went to a tagging methodology. We have just an area where you, where you just put tags, and the tags themselves, uh, you use um, a URI, and the URI, by means of having a protocol and domain, um, well, mainly the protocol, it indicates the class, and the, the value itself can be appended to the path or, or other, other URI means at the end as a, as, a, as a value or a query string or whatever. Um, so if you, if you might want to think about if you, you're going to have a lot of these things come up, having a, a single line way of doing it instead of having to all, all cases have pairs or sometimes tuples. All right. So I, I apologize. I, I forgot who was making the other comment. Uh, Jim, that was you, right? I did make a comment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you, you, but you were the one making the comment that you weren't, you weren't 100% sure if it was an objection, but you were the one that would raised it, right? I believe so, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. So um, how, how strongly do you feel that way? Because I'm, I'm taking the chair out of half here. This is strictly me as, as one of the representatives in the group. I tend to have a fairly low bar for extensions because the whole point of them is to see whether they're useful or not. Um, and in some cases, it may be duplicate information, and that's part of the thing that's going to get flushed out when people play with it. And if so, people may decide, okay, we're going to kill the extension. But I know that there are necessarily, not necessarily, I'm sorry, not necessarily all protocols have some sort of ordering aspect to them um, that, that this would fit nicely into. Um, so that's why my, my bar is fairly low for what should be an extension. I look at this as more of a playpen type area. And that's why I, 
I'm, I'm very resistant to, to to having a high bar. That's my take on it anyway. Anyway, uh, Jesse, I think your hand's up. So you yeah, know that you, you've kind of gone in that direction. I would, that's what I was going to say earlier is I, I feel like it's an extension. So I'd be inclined to allow something that isn't explicitly um, airtight, but this, this sort of thing um, around kind of a sequential protocol does open up a few things that I wonder about. Um, one, I, I believe it was Matt that brought it up where, or actually Matt replied to someone who brought it up. It might've been Jem. Um, just recently brought up the idea of, you know, multiple producers. So multiple producers, multiple consumers, and possibly something where the sequence matters from the beginning to an end, and there's n number of steps. Um, so that's that's not really something that's informed here. And also, I think this sort of opens a it opens a door to advising in the case of, you know, what happens if if you receive things out of order. And a sequence, you know, one one or more members of the sequence are missing. Uh, what's you know, sort of that's that's obviously something that is defined outside the scope of the spec and this extension. But I think calling that out sort of goes down the road a little bit. So I think, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't have any specific advice around this, and I wouldn't block the acceptance of this particular PR. But I think I just wanted to voice that. that that's sort of where my head starts going. Um, okay. So we could take an action item to extend this with some information about something like vector clocks to give an example of, of multi-producer sequencing. Yeah, and, and I think that might actually shore up half of my concerns just to have an example. And to end that, that also indicates, you know, like you can find an answer. It, not it, it won't necessarily be here, right? <laughs> so, Jim, not to pick on you, but I'll pick on you. <laughs> Since you're the one that uh, voiced uh, the possibility of a concern about this, um, how strongly do you do you feel about this? Is this something that you'd like to have the group like take a formal vote on, or you know, how, how'd you like to proceed? No, I mean, I I I agree with your comment around this being a a relatively sort of low bar thing, uh, and it to me it's sort of an an end to end application concern, not a transport concern. Yeah. Um, I, I think the other comment that was made around multiple producers, um, maybe that could be addressed by saying that sequences are uh, within a type and a source or something like that. Because I would assume you, know, you would generally have one event source, you know, given one publisher per source. So maybe that is a, a clarifying point. But other than that, yeah, I... Um, it was just an opinion. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, dead set on anything. Okay. So there were a couple of comments made about potential changes uh, or follow on pieces of work that could happen here. Of those ones that were mentioned, um, are any of those things that people feel strongly enough that they'd want to block the current PR from going in as opposed to doing it in follow on PRs? Because I'm trying to figure out whether we should move forward with, in essence, doing a vote now or. Does anybody feel strongly that their suggestion should go in before we even adopt this one? Okay, let me, let me phrase it more succinctly. Of, of the suggestions mentioned, is anybody advocating merging their suggestion in before we merge this PR? Okay, not hearing any. I'm gonna take that as people are okay with doing follow on pull request. In that case, is there any other question or comment about this PR before I ask the question about adopting it? All right, is there any objection then to adopting this pull request and merging it? All right, thank you guys, that was cool. I have a feeling this process will get easier as we start adding more and more. Um, all right, next issue, this one, I'm not sure we'll be able to resolve this today because people may need more time to look at it, but the open messaging spec or, or protocol, I transport, whatever you call it, um, has been out there. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, hold on a minute. Let me get to, there was some questions about whether this spec met the minimum bar. Uh, so without talking uh, for the moment about the content of the spec itself, I was wondering if people had a chance to look at this particular comment, which I think was edited um, 
last night about why they think it meets the minimum bar. And I'll give you guys a minute just to read this in case you haven't read it yet. Okay, so I'm not necessarily gonna ask everybody to definitively say for sure whether they think it's met the bar or not, because I think they may need more time to, uh, to think about it. However, I am gonna ask the question of, is, does somebody have an initial reaction and a, or a gut feeling as to whether this specification based upon the information in this comment is gonna meet the minimum bar? That depends, that depends on what's actually, so if there has been a change to the uh, uh, submission, because my understanding is that open messaging is three things. It's an abstraction, and then it also has a wire format, and then it's a benchmarking uh, collaboration project. And I think the only thing that really matters to us here, since we're talking about interop, would be a, specific, a wire specification. And the last time I looked at this submission, so I haven't looked, haven't looked uh, uh, in the last few weeks, um, was um, that it didn't describe a wire spec, but rather referred to more like a framework. Like okay. It's, it, it's the, so the, the, the spec as it, as it exists is very abstract. Okay. But do you have a comment on like, because one of our minimum bars was things like adoption in the industry and stuff like that. Do you have an opinion, Clemens, on whether these satisfy the criteria? To so, you? Rock, so uh, I mean, if you look at open messaging, and everybody needs to needs to really look at this themselves. Um, but if you look at at it from a yeah, so those are projects that exist in multi-party uh, um, um, uh, organizations. So that clears that bar. Um, but I would say if you look at, at the contributors list for both projects, for Rocket MQ as well as for um, open messaging, you'll find that the community is rather unilateral in both, um, except that open messaging in the benchmarking project where there's a lot of activity, but that's not related to this submission. Um, I would, I would, so personally, um, I would not be a big fan of um, of this binding, but if it's a wire specification, then I'm probably cool with it. Okay. Is there anybody else on the call, <clears throat> excuse me, who'd like to comment on their feelings about whether it meets the minimum bar or not? I poked around the openmessaging.cloud website just now a bit, and I can't find anything that looks like a, a wire format. I can find a Java API, but it just talks abstractly about headers and fields. So it's hard to understand what doing this would mean concretely. Uh, is, is there more pull request somewhere that explains what you'd actually do? Oh, okay. I'm not yeah. sure. I think that's, I think that's getting to what Clemens was saying too. It's very abstract. Yeah. The, the spec, the spec is really abstract and really what it is about is that this, it's the, it's the, um, the rocket MQ wire format, which is interestingly, so the rocket MQ wire format, apparently that's my understanding of it has been elevated into the open messaging specification without the actual specification, wire specification even making it yet on the open messaging side, which is the thing that kind of rubs me in the wrong way and is a little weird. Is it's, it's Apache Rocket MQ is something that has been put into Apache by Alibaba, apparently. Um, open messaging has been started by Alibaba and most of the people who I see contributing to the project basically exclusively except in the benchmark, benchmarking project are from Alibaba. Um, so that, that makes me a little uneasy about this because that's all smells um, like preparatory work being done, being done under the umbrella of an organization without much, you know, community pull. Okay. We have some hands up. Uh, Jim, I think you're first. Uh the, when I looked at open messaging a while ago, and I haven't looked, I have to say, for quite a while, my understanding was more of a programming model. So that would, to me, that's akin to somebody wanting to do um, a mapping document from cloud events to JMS. It, it was more of a that sort of level. I, I never took it as a wire level thing. I took it as an abstraction of a messaging infrastructure. Okay, I think Vlad, you're next, and then Heinz. So Vlad, 
Yeah, this is a tiny nitpick, but in the comment, there are no links to the claims. I Again, this is a nitpick, but if, uh, Doug, if you could move to the comment, they're saying that uh, several companies uh, voice oh. support or they're going to use stuff. I would really, really like to see links for this, and this is not just for this PR, but for most PRs who claim such stuff. I'm not saying I don't believe the comment, but I'm seeing there are links for open messaging, Apache Rocket MQ, and Apache Pulsar, but no links for claims that companies would support or they're getting involved or have announced their partic participation. If, we're, if we have a bar, that bar should at least come with some proof, not just claiming they have participated. They definitely, if they announce their participation, they definitely have a blog post or a tweet or something that's official. And that should be a link. Can I get you to make that comment into the PR itself? Sure. Thank you very much. And Heinz, you're next. Uh, yeah, just a quick comment where we actually had somebody in our group do a uh, evaluation on uh, open messaging. And the concern was we could not use it for asynchronous type messaging, which you would probably consider a lot of events would be asynchronous and not necessarily synchronous. So what uh, uh, they've been looking at as an alternative, which uh, uh, they, you might want to have a look at to compare if this should meet the minimum bar, is the information on the async API that is out there as well, which is what our people tend to be leaning towards for asynchronous eventing as opposed to uh, they could not seem to make it work with the uh, open API. Okay, uh, Perry, I think you're next. Yeah, I was just looking at their GitHub repo seems to have a, a tab under specification where it's a little bit uh, spread out, but you can get in to see what they're expecting in message headers and there's some descriptions about types expectations. So it is a bit more prescriptive. Um, I think it's it's less uh, flexible. It was like there's concerns that seem to be outside of the messaging space to me. Um, there's information there if people want to reference that. Okay, so all the points everybody's, I think the speaker queue is empty now. So. Um, all the points you guys brought up seem like very valid things. Can I ask all you guys who spoke up to please add comments to the pull request itself? Um, in particular, if you needed additional information, like Vlad, you asked for pointers and stuff like that. Please put those as comments into the pull request so that the author can respond to those. And then please take a look at the PR itself, in particular the, the, uh, the actual file changes themselves to see whether that um, whether it meets your guys' needs, whether you need more information, whether it's too abstract, you know, whatever comments you feel appropriate. Because um, this PR has actually been out there for quite a while and they've been kind of blocked by that, that bar that we defined. And so I feel kind of bad that it's taken this long for us to give them a definitive answer. So if possible, I'd like to, on next week's call, come back with a definite yes or no to them and not string them along any further. So please put your comments out there sooner rather than later so they have a chance to respond to them. And with that, I think we're pretty much out of time, but there's one thing that I forgot to do that if I, I need to go back and do. On the previous PR about the sequence attribute, <clears throat> now I know Christoph, um, since it's basically, um, since he helped write the PR and I know he's expressed interest in supporting it. Um, sorry, he's claiming, he, he's one of the voters who says, yes, I want to, you know, I want this thing in there. Because we have a minimum bar of two voting, voting entities approving uh, extensions, who would like to be the second voting entity approving that extension? Anybody want to volunteer for that? If you're a voting company? Hey, you can put me down for that. And who's that? Jesse. 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 Got it. Thank you. Sure. Okay. I was going to pick on Vlad since he expressed it just before, but I'm glad someone else spoke up voluntarily. <laughs> Thank you. All right, cool. With that, I believe at the end of the agenda, or at least for the time for today, um, are there any last minute questions or comments before I go back and do final roll call? All right, not hearing any. Let's go back up here. I think I heard most people. Um, Matt, I heard. Uh, Rohit, are you there? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, oh, you're there twice, sorry. Uh, Renato? Renato, are you there? Did we lose them? Yeah. Oh, you're there. Okay, excellent, yeah. thank you. All right, is there anybody on the agenda who I did not get? Or who's on the call is not in the agenda? All right, in that Hi, case. Hi, this is Vladimir from, Vladimir Bekvansky from PayPal. Uh, I have joined, uh, this is my first time with the group. Excellent. Do me a favor, can you put your full name 
and the and uh, you're, you're, you said you're from PayPal, yes, right? Yes, that's okay. right. Okay, I'll can you do me, yeah, put your full name into the agenda thing, into the agenda doc, and I'll add you all to right. the list of attendees. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. All right, anybody else? All right, in that case, since we have a whole two minutes, last chance. Any other topic we want to, want us to bring up really, really quick? All right, in that case, we're done. Thank you guys very much. You made it through quite a few today. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you, John. All right, talk to you guys next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.